Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's author reading on All About Books. If you missed my interview with author Lori Ray Hill and her book, Paper Stones, I'll put a link down below in the description box so you can watch her interview. And there will also be a link at the end of this video. So Lori, you'll be reading an excerpt from your book but today, but before you read, can you just give us a little bit of a background as to why you've chosen this particular passage? Well, this one has, I think, a little bit of some of the fun and the lightness um, and the daydreaming that, uh, that are interesting in a book on such a, a serious topic. And people find light in it right up and make it readable. So I thought, well, I'll give you a little sense of the, the women. They're waiting for their therapy group session for this week to start. And their friend Josie is in the hospital. They don't expect her to come, but Josie's the daydreamer. And here she comes. Okay. So she was so light and weak. She just got out of hospital, took a cab straight to here. Tammy grabbed Josie's little case. Sally had to know if Josie was warm enough or too warm or she wanted to drink of water. She was propping Josie's bad leg up and asking if she'd had any supper. Ladies, Josie says when she's all set up there like the queen, we got no further problems. Mark busts out with her funny laugh, <laughs> like a three liter jug getting shook. We are like your one stop shopping for any problem you might care to name. But Josie's Josie, she'll tell you that the sky is purple polka dots. We got no further problems, she says. Josie's been laying in the hospital just doing her best work there with the daydreams. The hotel that we're gonna build is gonna have these canvas deck chair items like they have on an ocean liner, eh? And you can open them out flat and look at the sky. And our screen porch is gonna have a clear ceiling so you can lay on your deck chair and take in the stars and the Northern lights. And there's gonna be experts come to see about the caves. What caves, I says. Josie gives me a glance. She says that on the far side of the point, they're secret caves. She's seen them, she says. What point? Hotel's gonna be on point of land, sticking out into the lake. You can see the water on three sides. And there's a man coming out of the cave, holding a rabbit by the ears. Josie's seen him up against a clear blue sky. Nobody knows about these caves, except they're in old legends that the native people tells. My niece Jenny's going to find the caves, and the man in the cave will show her. He's not good news, the caveman aunt, but ain't, but he's going to be the last of the bad news. Seeing him up there against the sky, holding the rabbit by the ears. I figure it's what, whatever they got her on for pain, except I wouldn't have it past her to know that I have been thinking about that brain-injured first caveman father that must have started all the trouble. Humans, eh? far as I know, there's nothing else twisted like us. The father Robin out in the trees, he don't try to mate with his little birds, does he? A rock must have never fell on the head of no cave bird. <laughs> Thank you. It's so great um, to hear you put to words, like to, to hear those women's voices. And for all the um, listeners out there, like the voices in this story are all incredible. That's just a small example of why the book is so um, warm and, and, and charming. So thank you so much, Lori. Thank you. Thank you for all this. This is just great, for, uh, Crystal. Thanks so much. Thank you. And for everyone else, please come back next week for another author and another interview and another reading. Thank you.